I'm going to show you some assessments of low contrast. And the first one is the Bailey Lovey chart, which you can see here. Now, if you're looking at it and thinking that's not an assessment of low contrast, then you would be correct. However, the Bailey Lovey test is, has actually two components. This is the first part, and it's a normal uh, logmar distance test. And you can see that there are five letters on each line. And this assessment is carried out at six metres. On the right hand side, you have the value of each line in logmar. On the left, you have the value in metres and in feet, in brackets. So this assessment, the part of the assessment, will um, give you a, an acuity for a distance. However, once that assessment has been completed, when you turn the test round, you have a very similar assessment, but this time in low contrast. And you can then compare the results that you get um, with high contrast, normal, um, versus low contrast. So that is how that, that assessment works. There are two cards. So again, you've got patients or um, yeah, in an optician, if you've got uh, young people who've got rather good memory, you can use this version instead. The high contrast and the low contrast. So that is the Bailey Lovey Contrast Assessment. Now I'm just going to move my camera. There we go. I'm going to show you two other assessments to test contrast. Let's look at this one on the left first of all. Now, the two that remain uh, actually come from Precision Vision by Leah Havaranen. And the first one is the Enhancement Game. And I particularly like this one. There are four sets of cards and the only difference between uh, the set of cards is the actual size of the shape. So we're going to start with the one with four lines on the back. You can see um, as the test progresses, the shapes on the card get smaller. So let's start with the largest one. So when I show you the other side of the card, they're a bit like uh, dominoes. And that's exactly how you play it. So let's imagine that we are playing with a child or a young person. We split the pack into two. I'm just going to do that roughly. Drop some on the floor. And the child or young person always plays first. So let's imagine that uh, they play that first card. Now, as you may have noticed in my quick flick through, the symbols on uh, these cards uh, are the circle, the square, the apple, um, and the house. So the child always plays first. This is because you as the adult are always going to match to the darkest symbol, forcing the child or young person to match to the paler symbol. So uh, they would go next and they're looking for a circle or an apple. Um, I'm going to just um, choose the apple. 
and well here it's it's both tails isn't it so um i might i'm going to choose one and i'm going to make sure that the that it's pale on the other end so i would choose a circle and i'm forcing them to choose something um to find um the symbol um, that's palest again now you can this test can be carried out at 40 centimetres um, when you turn over onto back the number with M indicates the size 2.5 indicates the contrast uh, so if they're able to match this card um, here it means that they can match uh, symbols of 12.5 M at 2.5% contrast it also has an equivalent of um, 6 over 190 uh, distance wise. It correlates to Snellen or 20 over 630 or uh, a Logmar as well. So, but this is the largest size if the child or young person is able to match all of these cards, you would then move on to the smaller sets. I'll just show you those briefly. Um, you could decide to play a longer game and match sets two and three together. This is the third set. Um, you will see that it's only got uh, two lines on the back, so it's the second smallest. And you will see here, if I hold it this way, the shapes are considerably smaller. So easy to find out where the um, child or young person is making a mistake and you will um, see from the back the size and also the contrast and if I just take one example here from the smallest size and contrast on the back so 3.7m of 2.5% contrast so quite a good fun game to play it doesn't appear um, like an assessment um, and you get uh, very good um, results from that. Now the final assessment that I'm going to show you in terms of contrast can be used with many uh, different children and young people. It's very quite well known, it's called Hiding Heidi and it's a low contrast face test and as I've said before, uh, Precision Vision by Leah Havaranen. There is a very um, specific way that this test uh, should be administered and uh, I'm going to try and, and show you. It's quite difficult um, just because I am working the wrong way around because of the camera. So you use the front cover round the wrong way as your blank and then you will see that uh, here we have Heidi and this uh, face is of 100% contrast, the blackest one on white. If I turn that one over, we now have a face of 25% contrast, 10%, 5%, 25 and 1.25. So we start off with the darkest face and here it is and we take our front cover and we cover them over. So this part here would be against, uh, would be facing out and uh, if I turn it all over this part here would be um, against uh, your chest. It is really important when you're carrying out this assessment that you are wearing something that's um, quite plain so that you're not um, attracting attention by what, with what you're wearing. So when you hold them in front of you, quite, quite difficult, I try and come around this way. When you're holding them in front of you, nope, it's not going to work. <laughs> Hold them in front of you, and the idea is 
that you are going to pull them apart at the same time. So you're going to do that. And then you're going to look to see how the, the child or young person looks at the face rather than at the blank card. You're going to do it again. So here we are. We're holding it like this. And then we are pulling it apart. Now what we don't want to do is this where only the one with the face on it moves. Both cards need to move at the same time. So that's I can quite tricky to get this central way done. Probably not going to do it very well. Here we go. Okay, and so that's how you do it. And you're looking to see the child making a definite, definite move with their eyes perhaps with their head, but definitely with their eyes, looking at the face. So once you've done it with 100%, we then move down. Shouldn't really be speaking at all when we're doing it. Um, keep it there. And then we're going to move them both apart. Obviously not right out to the side, really only um, apart like that, so that they're still um, there's just a small gap between them. So you don't want them very wide apart. I'm getting both of them out of shot. Uh, you don't want a big gap like that. You just want them to be fairly close together. And there's a little bit of a knack uh, to doing it. If you get a definite response to that, you then go down to 10% and then 5% and then the 2.5 and the 1.25. You may want to repeat this um, assessment several times um, just to make sure that you're getting um, a definite result or you can ask the child to point the face depending um, on that uh, child's um, ability and uh, physical um, limitations.